Welcome to the Journeys Weekly Online Service. We're so glad that you have decided to spend your time with us. My name is Vanessa, and I will be your host for this video. I hope that wherever you are, whoever you are, watching this with, that you would experience the peace of God. That we could take a moment from our busy, stressful, hectic lives and think about who God is and what He has done for us. And trust me, He does so much more for us on a daily basis. Anytime you need prayer, you can email prayer at thejourneynova.org or click on the link found in the notes of this video. You'll be added to our prayer list, and if you'd like, we can follow up with you in a variety of ways. One of the things we do to get our heads and our hearts in the right mindset is to sing. When we sing, we remind ourselves of the truth and we pray and worship our God together. So here is Gary and the worship team to lead us and prepare ourselves for what God has in store for us. I see the work of your hand Spin in a heavenly dance, oh God. All that you are is so overwhelming. And I hear the sound of your voice. All at once, it's a gentle and thundering noise, oh God. All that you are is so overwhelming. I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. God, I run into your arms, unashamed because of mercy. I'm overwhelmed. Forgiven and free forever you'll be my God And all that you've done is so overwhelming Come on, let's delight in Him today I delight myself in you in the glory In the glory of your presence I'm overwhelmed
When I think about God's goodness, his kindness to me, in spite of what I deserve, it is truly overwhelming. And that's just one of the many reasons why I choose to believe, even with all the chaos and the violence and the senselessness in our world, I choose to believe that God has everything under control and that Jesus paid it all to change my destiny. Let's sing about it together today. I love that song. That is a message that I need every single day of my life, if I'm being honest. This is what a relationship with Jesus is all about, that He sees us, that He knows our faults and our debts, and He still loves us enough to forgive us. He loved us enough to make the ultimate sacrifice. We want everyone to experience this type of love from Jesus, and that is why we do all that we do here at The Journey. This is why we stood outside in the sun last week to distribute boxes of fresh food to families who need it. It is work like this in the community that makes me proud to call their journey my church. And we just learned this week that the office of the lead district supervisor wants our parking lot for two more food distribution events in August. We are so excited about this and we will get you more details on how you can volunteer in the upcoming weeks. Okay, make sure you gather some communion elements because we will take communion together soon. But for now, let's go to Chad for the next week in our series, Upside Down. Hey Journey Church and to all of our friends from all over the world hanging out with us today, uh, thanks for joining us online this week. Uh, well today, 
we head back into our series called Upside Down. Now, I mean, in this series, we're looking through a teaching Jesus gives that we call the Beatitudes. And, and like I said a couple of weeks ago, this series fits so perfectly in the place we find ourselves in right now. I mean, with all the craziness going on in our world and our lives, each one of these Beatitudes speaks beautifully into our souls. And I hope through this series, you're taking next steps towards Jesus as we continue to be challenged each week. Now, the Beatitude for, for this week, it's so perfect for today. I mean, it's perfect for what we see happening right in front of us. It's perfect for what we hear around us everywhere we go. It's perfect for what we read on social media. So, so I hope you're ready for today's because, because this one is going to challenge all of us more than any other. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus says these words, Blessed are the cheesemakers. Uh, if you got that joke, hit the heart button. Surely a few of you will. For those who didn't, I'm not going to explain it. Jesus actually doesn't say blessed are the cheesemakers. He says blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Some of you may be familiar with the tense relationship between Lady Astor and Winston Churchill. Uh, these stories are legends and probably never happened, but they gave a glimpse into the relationship these two shared. Lady Astor was the first woman in Parliament in Great Britain and also an American citizen, who, by the way, was born in Danville, Virginia. It said she once told Churchill, Winston, if I were your wife, I would put poison in your coffee. Churchill retorted back, and if I were your husband, Nancy, I would drink it. Uh, there's story after story of the conflicts between these two people, but, but as we well know, there's conflict everywhere in our world today. I mean, if we were to take one of those school globes and spin it around and close our eyes and stop it by putting our finger on it, guess what? Wherever our finger ended up, there'd be conflict. But not only is there conflict everywhere, we seem to love to watch conflict happen. Now, of course, as, as long as it's not us in the conflict, we'll grab some popcorn, sit back, and enjoy the show. But today, we're not talking about other people's conflicts. We're going to talk about your conflicts. In fact, if you've ever experienced conflict in your life at any time, hit that heart button on the screen. My guess is your screen is looking like a Christmas tree about right now because we've all faced conflict. All of us have experienced conflict in our life at some point, and many of us, we're experiencing it in our life right now. I mean, there are conflicts in our personal relationships, family, marriage, kids, grandparents, friends. There are conflicts at work with your boss, your coworkers, HR, the company. There are conflicts where you go to school, the places you frequent, in your neighborhoods. And in this new world we live in, I mean, there's a lot of conflict that takes place from behind our keyboards. Studies show there are a couple of basic responses to conflict when they first arise. The first group of people are called the avoiders. Hey, hit that heart button if, if you're an avoider. Now, don't worry. No one's actually going to know. Just go ahead and do that for us. But we've talked about this before about relationships and the fight or flight response Avoiders are the flight people. Avoiders run. There's this voice screaming inside their heads where, wherever there's conflict or, or even the prospect of conflict to run away as fast as possible. Why do avoiders run when conflict comes? Sometimes this is because of a personality trait. It's just who they are. But often it comes from past experiences, past pain they've encountered or, or being on the other end of conflict. If you're an avoider, you try to keep things light. You try to make things all better as fast as possible. Avoiders hate conflict so much, they'll deny the fact that there's even a problem. But guess what? That conflict, it never goes away. It's still there. It's present. It's eating away at the avoider. Now, the second group is called the attackers. In the flight or fight world, they are the fighters. The voice in their heads usually doesn't stay in their heads. It's released from its cage. Bring it on. I'm going to get you for this. This isn't over. Attackers don't run away. They run into the fray, ready to fight. 
So the chances are pretty good you're either an avoider or an attacker when it comes to conflict. But just like Jesus didn't say, blessed are the cheesemakers, Jesus also didn't say, blessed are the avoiders or blessed are the attackers. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. So what constitutes us being peacemakers? For the Jewish people in Jesus' day, and even today, they would greet each other with the word shalom. Now, we think it's just a different way to say hello, but, but that isn't what that word means. Shalom actually means the peace of God be with you. <laughs> that word is way more than a greeting. It's, it's this hope for a place of contentment with your life because of God. It's being in this place where your cup is full, where you aren't running from God, but you are running to God. Shalom is this place you want to be because there's this deep connection to God and also to other people. There's this wholeness to who you are and the relationships you have. And not because of any actions you've taken, but because of your connection to God. See, when God created this world, the agenda was simple. Peace. Shalom. But then this virus shows up, this thing we call sin, and, and it changed the landscape forever. God didn't give up on that desire for peace, though. God didn't say, well, that didn't work. I'm out. No. God's ultimate goal for humanity was peace and still is peace. And the cure for that virus of sin and the bringer of that peace was Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul writes this about Jesus. For Christ himself has brought us peace. See, God's vaccine for our virus of sin was Jesus. And if we follow Jesus, we're called to live a life of peace. Look at what Paul writes in Colossians 3. So let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as a member of one body, we're called to live in peace. God doesn't send Jesus to earth to just diffuse some peace. God's desire is that peace Jesus came to bring would also be planted in our hearts, in our lives, so we will be peace. Again, Jesus doesn't say be a peace receiver or be a peace bringer or even be a peace doer. Jesus says be a peace maker. So how can we be peacemakers? Let's think about it this way. There are two truths about our lives we may not know. Now, I know you've been wondering about these two buckets the whole time. Now, the first truth is each of us carries two buckets with us daily. And these two buckets are buckets you take with you everywhere you go, and, and you may not even realize it. From the time you wake up until the time you go to bed, you carry these buckets with you. When you eat breakfast, these buckets are there. When you go to work, these buckets are right beside you. When you jump onto social media, these buckets are in your hands. When you go out on a date, when you're talking to friends, when you're at your meeting at the Pentagon, when you're lying in bed with your spouse, when you're at your kids' events, wherever you go, you carry these two buckets with you. So what's in these two buckets? Well, here you go. In one bucket, you're carrying gasoline, and in the other, water. But here's the second truth we have to realize. Not only are we carrying both of these buckets with us all the time, but everywhere we go, there's always a fire. Now, these fires can be small like an ember, or they can be huge like a forest fire. You have to realize that every room you enter, Every conversation you have, every Facebook post you engage, every counseling session you attend, every meeting you go to at work, every time you drive your car, every time you enter your home, everywhere you are, there's a fire burning. Now, not only a fire is burning around you, but don't forget, you're also carrying these two buckets with you, one filled with gas and the other filled with water. So if a fire is going on, no matter the size, if I throw gas on it, what's going to happen? Boom! Explosion! And that explosion is going to hurt me and everyone who's around me. Throwing gas on the fire will leave ugly scars. It will leave marks on those we say we care about and love. And it'll take a long time to heal from the burns of the fire we made worse because we threw gas onto that fire. But what happens when the fire is raging and then I throw water onto it? There's no explosion. There's no uncontrollable fire. You hear something different when you throw water onto a fire. You hear a sss. Why? 
The water puts the fire out. It quenches the fire's thirst for more accelerant, for more oxygen to keep it going. It snuffs out the things that cause the fire to begin in the first place. Let's take this idea of these two buckets and rethink the beatitude this way. Blessed are the people who bring the presence into the room, into the relationship, into the meeting, into their homes, into their conversations. Are you bringing the boom or are you bringing the into your fires? Because you have a default bucket you carry and choose when the fires are burning. Which bucket is the default mode for you? Uh, let's say you're a gas person. That your default is to throw gas onto already tense situations. The gas you throw onto those fires are more than likely your words. Maybe your temper takes over and anger begins to swell inside of you. This past week, our reading plan was called Enemies of the Heart. If you did this devotional with us, you know that one of the days the enemy was anger. In the devotion for day three, it said, The root of anger is the perception that something has been taken. Something is owed you. Sometimes we throw gas onto the fire because we don't like what has been done to us, or said to us, or written about us. Or it could be that something has been done to someone else that upsets us or said about a political figure we like or written about a particular group we agree with. I'm not saying there's no validity how we feel at that moment, but what I am asking is do you throw gas onto that fire to make it even bigger or do you throw water? The gas we throw back so often is our words. Words of hate, words of anger, words of what we hope happens to that person or that group. In our minds, you've hurt me. You owe me. So I owe you to hurt you back. So we say, say something back to them, or we tell something to someone else about that person that hurt us, or we write something online for everyone to see. Are your words the gas you're throwing on the flames? Another way we throw more gas on the fire is when we're quick to make excuses about our behavior. You know, I'm justified because I've had a really long day. Or, you know, it's okay. I'm just really tired. I've been with these kids for three months straight. Or maybe you say to your spouse, I've been around you for 112 days with no breaks, so I really don't mean it. I just need a break. See, we're really good at making excuses for our behavior. My outburst, the, the gas I just threw on the fire, it's okay. This is who I am right now. Someday I'll change, but right now, this is me. Work is hard. Relationships are broken. Finances stink. The car always needs repairs. I've been stuck in my home for three months. My kids may never go back to school. So we keep throwing more and more gas onto the fires that are burning around us by making excuses for our actions and more likely the words we spew out. Which bucket are you throwing onto the flames around you? The one full of gas? Or the one full of water. See, one thing we know and, and probably learned from an early age is that throwing gas on a fire brings attention. People take notice. Throwing gas onto fires gets things done, gets people moving. It brings about reactions. It's like we've been told that, that some attention is better than no attention. So we've decided that throwing gas on the fires is the only way to go through life. And for you, you may not care. And maybe you, you never fully comprehend its impact on you and those around you. Maybe you don't even notice. But I bet you've seen those explosions in the lives of others. You've seen the aftermath. You've seen the hurt and pain that the gas on the fire brings. Yeah, what do we do even though we're aware of what's still happening? <laughs> we keep throwing more gas on the fire. For example, let me share a couple of statements with you based on what is happening in our world right now. Now, listen to these. Here's the first one. I think our president is the best president ever. I think there should be strong gun control, even banning most guns. I think all lives matter. I think there should be equal rights for the LBGTQ community. Now, some of you, your hands are quivering at the keyboard right now. You're ready to throw gas onto the fire, and, and maybe someone already did. Now, I don't know, because this was taped a couple of days ago. I'm hoping no one responded, but what I'm betting is that each one of these statements brought about some deep feelings in, in every single one of us. 
I bet that for every single person watching today, at least one of these statements are some of the fires burning around you. And you're ready to throw gas into the fire. In fact, you probably already have. In a conversation with a family member, in a chat with someone from work, and of course, online. You're ready to fight. You're ready to take that gas bucket and throw it into the fire. Look, I use these examples because in our world today, these are the fires being lit. These are the fires burning around us, not to mention all the personal fires all of us are facing. Please hear me out, though. You don't have to throw gas on the fire. You don't have to make the fire worse, but, but that's what we do over and over and over again. Why not begin to put the gas bucket down and start throwing water on the flames instead? Now listen to me. Some of you think you're throwing water on that person's Facebook posts, but you're not. They're not interested in your opinion on a particular topic. They want to burn their own fire, and even when you think you're throwing water on it because, well, you're right and they're not, all you're doing is throwing more gas on the fire. Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the people who throw water, not gas. Blessed are the people who learn to restrain themselves from posting a comment on social media to tell someone else how wrong they are. Blessed are the people who know what they're thinking in their head and doesn't end up on the internet. Blessed are the people who work to bring about shalom in themselves. Blessed are the people who work to bring about shalom in our world. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. There's a question I want you to answer today. It's a very simple but important question. What conflict would you say God is calling you to be a peacemaker in right now? What relationship, what topic, what person is God nudging you towards right now to take on the role of peacemaker? You probably know where the fire is located. You probably know how, how big the fire is. You probably already know what you want to do about it, but the question is, where is God calling you to be a peacemaker today? And not, not to throw in gas, but to throw on water. For you, the place God is calling you to be a peacemaker may be in your relationships with family. Now, that, that fire has been burning for a long time with your parents, your in-laws, your kids, your spouse. And maybe you keep throwing gas on it. Could it be time for you to take the water bucket and put out the fire? That may mean a conversation or asking for forgiveness. It may mean you bring in a third party to mediate that conversation because, because that fire has been burning out of, of control for so long. What family relationships do you need to throw water onto? Or the place God may be calling you to be a peacemaker is, is at work, in your friendships, in your neighborhood, or the organizations your kids are a part of. There are always fires in those places. It could be that your office is toxic, or every single environment you're in has tension in it. Or maybe you're the reason these people and places are on the edge all the time. Do you want to keep throwing gas on the fire, or are you ready to throw out the water? Again, that may mean some painful conversations have to be had, or, or once again, someone is called in to meditate. But if you follow Jesus, you're called to be a peacemaker, not a gas thrower. And I'm going to say this again because for some reason we just don't get it. For too many Christians, we sit at our computers and get on social media and our water bucket is nowhere to be found. In fact, right beside us is the biggest bucket of water anyone has ever seen. I read so many posts and comments from people who claim to be Christians in response to what other people have written that are not the way of a peacemaker. Now, honestly, uh, the way they interact with others is, is absolutely embarrassing. Now, sometimes the people who write these posts or comments are people I look up to or, or even admire, but they just can't let go of the gas bucket. Here's the deal. As soon as you write those words and you post them, people will begin to judge who you are and what you believe. You might be right. But the world doesn't care. That person doesn't care. But you and I, if we're followers of Jesus, we should care. 
but we're called to be witnesses to the world about who Jesus is. And for many of us, our witness is that, that we are some of the best gas throwers out there. Here's my advice for those of us who follow Jesus. Throw water on the fire, which means don't respond, don't comment. You might need to get, need to get rid of social media or, or snooze a bunch of people, which is what I do a lot. Um, set some boundaries for you because here's the deal. It's about to get worse. Man, with our election cycle getting ready to go in the full swing, uh, those gas buckets will be huge from all sides. Why not start to build some bigger water buckets instead? And listen, if the comments you read or something you feel needs to be addressed, here's a novel idea. Set up a time to talk to that person in person. You'd be amazed at how small your gas bucket is when you have to look them in the eyes. You're called by Jesus. I'm called by Jesus to be a peacemaker, not a gas thrower. Well, they offended me. They offended my family. They offended my country. They offended my rights. They offended my fill in the blank. You do know people have been doing this since the start of humanity. It doesn't make it right. But when we look at the ultimate peacemaker, Jesus, he was attacked all the time. And there were always fires following him everywhere he went. But Jesus didn't throw gas on those fires. He brought an overflowing bucket of water. So when you march with protesters in regards to injustice and someone with a different opinion begins to hurl insults at you, bring your water bucket. When you're offended by what someone has said about you or, or someone you know, bring your water bucket. When someone says something political that you are fully against, bring your water bucket. When your family member is trying to rile you up about someone else in the family, bring that water bucket. See, we can either fan the flames or put those same flames out. We can either cause a boom or bring about a s Jesus tells us to throw water on the fires around us, to bring about in the world the same thing that was in the world when God created it, shalom. This incredible, full, whole peace should, should be what we take with us when those fires are burning. This week, I invite you to read with me the reading plan, The Path of a Peacemaker. It's a seven-day reading about how we can learn to be peacemakers and not gas throwers. A link is over in the chat area on your screen. Here's why learning to be a peacemaker is so important and why we should be a people carrying around huge water buckets. If you're a follower of Jesus, who you are in times of conflict, may be the difference in someone's eternity. Let that settle into your soul. Let that responsibility kick in, which means you have to answer that question today. Are you carrying around a bucket of gas or a bucket of water? Jesus says, bring those buckets of water. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Let's pray. God, my prayer today is we can be a people who are putting out fires and, and not causing them to get bigger. My prayer is we are a people who seek peace in the conflicts of our life. My prayer is we are a people who seek out the shalom you so desired when this earth was created. My prayer is we follow Jesus and, and on this earth with all the power and might we have, with all the backing of who you are, that we become peacemakers. Your promise is if we are peacemakers, we will be called your children. Lead us to shalom, to peace in our relationships, in our homes, in the places we work, in our communities, with people we disagree with, with people we interact with online, with all of humanity. Lead us forward, God, as peacemakers. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for being here, and now you can join us for a time of communion. Jesus set this tradition and sacrament in place on his last night as a free man. When he was with his disciples, Jesus took two staples in his Middle Eastern culture, bread and wine, and instructed them to remember him whenever they gathered together. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body.
Then Jesus took the wine and passed the cup to them, telling them that this represented the new covenant between them and God. So together we drink, remembering his blood that he shed for us. Let us pray. God, thank you. Thank you for permitting this time for us to just gather in your presence, my God. Thank you for opening our hearts so that we can be able to receive your message. We just thank you for your unconditional love. We thank you that you sent Jesus and he made the ultimate sacrifice for us, my God. We ask that as the busy days ahead, that lie ahead of us, you just be with us in our hearts and our minds, that you be at the center of it all, my Jesus. And that it doesn't just end today, but it's every day, my God. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching our July 5th service. I hope you can watch the next one with us live at 9 or 11 a.m. Eastern or Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. This gives us the ability to chat together, offer live prayer through our online church host, and you have a sense of community. You can find our live services at thejourneynova.online.church. Thanks and have a great week.